have a, ooh, we've got a really big group and we have some new friends because we had CILC put it on, put connected home on their website. So we're really happy to see you and meet you. And this is Colleen is one of our incredible presenters during and partners during regular Connected North. But when we went Connected North at home, she was one of the first people that said, I'm going to be there for you. Hi, Elena. Good to see you. So um, we're going to turn it over to her in a second. But just for now, we're going to go on a little scavenger hunt. You need a pencil, a piece of paper and a straight edge. And then I'm going to turn it over to Colleen. So over to you. Hey, well, thanks so much for that lovely introduction, as always, Mally. Um, visiting with you and Katie and the Connected North friends are always one of my favorite, favorite parts of the week. So thanks so much for that. Um, we're going to be talking about perspective drawing, and we're going to make our own perspective drawing. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm actually really excited to make a drawing together with you. Um, but first, we're going to look at some art that we have at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Um, that uses perspective drawing and I have a piece of art behind me that we're going to talk a little bit about um, as well um, that an artist friend of mine made. Um, so if it's okay to share my screen, I always forget how to, oh, do I go to share? Oh, no, I see it. I see it. I'm That's it, Colleen. No, yeah. it's just a minute, every time. <laughs> okay, I see the share button. I'm going to share screen. I'm going to go to slideshow, play from start. Can you guys hear me all right? Yep, great. Thank you, Gabby. All right, so this is the Winnipeg Art Gallery where I work. I'm not there today. I haven't been in the building on Fridays lately. Oh, actually, is that maybe I was there last Friday, but I'm not. I'm working from home today. Um, from my studio in my basement at home, um, but this is the building where I where I work. And actually, as I'm looking at the building, I love this building shape. It's like a big slice of cake. Oh, and the, right, we have pers um, participants. So um, this is the Winnipeg. Um, this is the Winnipeg Art Gallery where I look. Welcome to the new participants from Sioux Lookout. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, this is this is downtown in Winnipeg. This is our legislative building at the end of the street here. Um, we have a nice big rooftop uh, that has sculptures that just opened up recently and there's sculptures on display and there's a big water fountain up there. Um, and I think it may be interesting if we make something this shape in our drawing we do ourselves. Um, so here is a drawing by an Inuit artist um, whose name is Kanan Igak Utukuk. Excuse my pronunciation. Um, and so perspective drawing is where you draw something on a flat piece of paper with a flat line, but as you make this drawing, you add depth to it and you trick your eye to thinking um, that it's three dimensional and there's depth. When I look at this, I don't just look at it and see a flat piece of paper and pencils and lines. I see water and I see three boats and I see their reflection on the water. Oh, somebody's grandpa lives in Winnipeg. That's wonderful. Um, so this illusion that's tricking your eye is created by angles, lines, and creating an illusion of space. So this line through the back of our the drawing we're looking at here is the horizon line. And we're gonna be making a horizon line in our own drawing that we create. And it's tricking our eyes to thinking that this line goes way off into the distance. Okay, we're gonna look at some other examples. Um, here's another drawing by the same artist of a little town. Um, I also love that the drawing is is made with things that we probably use um, at home or in school. So this is made with pencils and pencil crayons and maybe some markers. Uh, and so it's creating this illusion of depth and perspective 
by layering. That's another way to create that illusion. And we're gonna do that in our own drawing as well. So just building here, I hope you guys can see my cursor as I'm moving it. There's a little building in the front and a big building in the front and there's buildings behind it. Thank you, AJ and Charlie. Thank you, you can, yes, great. So behind it, creates this idea of depth as well. So it makes us know that this is closer to us because there's something behind it. So that layering starts making our brain think that there's even more depth to the drawing. The objects that are higher up on the page are usually the ones that seem further away. So the ones that are at the bottom here in this drawing, you would think that this is closer to us. And then the next closest thing would be this building, because I think it overlaps this building here. Then these ones would be behind it. And then these kind of rocky hills or mountains would be in the background. Elena, cool, thanks. I think that's pretty cool too. It's neat to think about how the artist is tricking our eyes to that they'd like us to see and share with us. Oh, here is uh, a, another drawing by IT Putagut. Um, and this is an inside space, an interior drawing. The other ones were outside. This one's interior and the artist is using angled lines that are all following the same direction, moving towards an imaginary point that we can't see, which would probably be, probably be if we were to follow this line, probably be somewhere over here, off the page. And because the lines are all following that line moving towards this imaginary vanishing point, we, our mind thinks that there's depth in this drawing and also because of the layering. So again, this part is at the bottom of the page. So we're reading that this is closest to us. This paper is the closest thing. Then we see the artist sitting here and that's close as well. And then because this table is layering over top of this table, we can't see where the legs are. It's in front, it's layering it. Our mind is believing that this is further away. And then moving towards the door here. Now, what I just said about the vanishing point and the lines of the angles, that may be a little tricky right now, but once we understand what I'm meaning, now, something I'd like to point out are that the lines that are going up and down, the vertical lines, they are all straight. They're not angled. They are going straight up and down. But the ones that are going horizontal, they are the ones that are angled a little bit, some of them. This one. Okay, let's see the next image. Here's a lovely exterior drawing um, of Cape Dorset, now known as Kingate. And this is a really good way of showing how the layering helps to create perspective as well and depth. So again, this is at the bottom of the page and we're reading it as closest to us. This is somebody's stairs. And look, there's a little pet carrier here, a little animal carrier. Um, this house here, is drawn smaller than of the staircase. Now we know in real life, the house here, the house is actually way bigger than a staircase is, but because it's smaller, our mind realizes that it's further away. It's meant to be further away. And same with thing with these buildings in the background, they are smaller as well. So again, we're believing that they are further away and the way they're layered as well. So it looks like this one here is layered over top of this one. So we're reading that this is a little bit closer. This building here is in front of this one. 
So re, re, we are reading again that this one is closer and this one's further away. Oh, thanks, Mally. I love these pieces of art too. These are ones that belong to the Winnipeg Art Gallery and they're um, newly acquired pieces. They're ones that um, we just got recently to the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Um, sometimes when art collectors um, get a bit older, they decide that they move want to move to a smaller place and they don't have as much space for their artwork. And then they donate their art to the Winnipeg Art Gallery oftentimes. So these are pieces that were donated recently and we're really fortunate to have them. Here's an outdoor scene. I think I've only got one or two more drawings. Um, and again, it's a good way of showing the angles that you can use in perspective drawing to create this illusion of depth. And also it looks like these caribou, I believe they're caribou in the background. They're so small and tiny, so we believe that they're further away. Okay, now here is an art, a piece of art um, that uh, we also newly made for the Winnipeg Art Gallery. It was made special for a show that we had at the Winnipeg Art Gallery two years ago by a Métis artist who lives in Winnipeg named Ian August. Um, and it's an indoor scene and he's angled the lines of the table here, moving towards uh, an imaginary vanishing point that we can't see. It would probably be about this, about here. If we were to follow where these lines are, probably be about here. There's an, a, or an imaginary horizontal line back here and all the lines are kind of moving to towards this imaginary point. Um, it's a really neat interior space uh, that really gives you that sense of depth. And I wanted to show you Ian's piece. I'm going to stop sharing now. How do I stop sharing again? Oh, there it is. It popped up. That's right. It has to pop up. Um, because I also have a piece made by Ian August in my house that also uses perspective drawing. And that's the drawing that I have right behind, or the painting, I should say, the painting behind me here. And the last piece was a painting as well. Sorry if I said drawing. Um, so this is a painting that Ian made. I'm going to go a little closer to it. I hope you can hear me. Um, where he's also creating this uh, sense of perspective and depth. Um, so it's maybe a little tricky to see what it is. Ian also really likes making dioramas like I do as well. And he makes them out of found objects, but then he creates paintings of the dioramas. So this is a painting that Ian made of an imaginary building. He used cheese graters that he found in a thrift shop, three cheese graters and put some sort of board in front of them to make them look like a type of building. He put them on top of an old book that he had and it's sitting on top of these, what do you call these? Like um, horses, I think you call them when you woodworking, woodworking horses, um, these legs anyways. And then he has some trees that he made out of some found objects, some natural material outside. Um, so it re the way, although it's a flat two dimensional surface, you really can imagine how deep this room would be and how big, um, or the angles that this diorama would have. It doesn't look just like a flat surface. It looks like it would actually be, um, a fairly large three dimensional piece that you could dive into. All right. So. Now I think would be a great time for us to start drawing. Oh, Charlotte, you wrote, this is so pretty. Sorry, I missed when you said that comment. Um, were you speaking of the painting here? Yes, yeah, me too. I thought so as well when I saw it. All right, so I am going to now share to the document camera and we're gonna start making our own uh, drawing, our own perspective drawing. Uh, 
bear with me just a minute. Here we go. Can you guys hear me all right? Oh, good. Thank you, Brody. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. <laughs> I'm always, I always forget to, it always shocks me a little when I see how, how, uh, how much paint is on the table on the camera. All right, so I've got my piece of paper ready to go. I'm going to move my laptop over a little bit. Um, and I have a ruler. Oh, there we go. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, oh, I should let you know, first of all, I think what we're going to do first is we're going to draw just some interesting shapes uh, floating in space and um, like in an open space. And we're going to see how we can make them have depth. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our horizon line. Remember in the some of the images there, uh, the one with the boat, the first slide we saw? Um, it had a horizon line you could really see clearly in the background. And that's just a line that goes across your page like that, horizontally across your page. So if everybody could do that, that would be awesome. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our vanishing point. And that's that dot that all of our angled lines are going to connect to. Um, some artists make a little X. On the line, some artists just do a dot, whatever you would like to do. We're going to do one point, and this is one point perspective drawing we're doing. So that's a very important part to us. Now we're going to create um, a shape, and the first shape I'm going to create is a square. So I'm going to use my ruler. You don't necessarily have to use your ruler um, if you can draw a, a, a square with straight edges, um, or you can use whatever hard edge you have, like a book or something. Um, but I'm going to use my ruler. So a square has, and it's kind of a rough square. I'm not measuring that it, the, the four sides are exactly equal. So it may actually be more like a, a rectangle now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, that's more like a rectangle. There we go. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a minute. Everybody's got a square on their page. All right, now here's where the magic happens. We are going to use our straight edge to connect. The, oh, is it a little blurry? There we go. We're going to connect this corner of our square we're going to draw a line that goes right from here to our vanishing edge or vanishing point. So you're going to want to line that up with the ruler first. Line it up the, with the ruler and then I'm going to lightly draw it doesn't have to be dark just going to lightly draw the line. Give you guys just a minute. Right. And you guys let me know if I'm going too fast. Good. All right. Thank you, AJ. Thanks. Now I'm going to make a, a dot here just so it's more noticeable on the corner of this. Uh, we'll call it a rectangle because it is more of a rectangle than a square. And I'm going to line this up with this. So I'm going to line these up and I'm going to make another line. Ooh, <laughs> Mally says, this is like magic. It is, it doesn't take long before it really starts creating the illusion of depth. It's very blurry, hard to see. Oh, is my, is my camera blurry for you? Uh, Gabriella says, no, 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 most of you are saying no. Uh, Brody's saying can't see at all. Yeah, Brody, I wonder, um, why don't you log back out and log back in again? That might help because we have Colleen pinned, which means that her camera will come up even if someone else is speaking. It is just a little blurry when you move, Colleen, but it's fine now. Okay. 
Maybe it's a little pixelated on Brody's end, I'm wondering. Okay, so now the next one we're gonna do is we're, I'm gonna put another dot here just so it's nice and clear on this, this corner right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line this up, these two up. A little blurry now. And then I'm going to go like that. Um, someone says they can't see from C. Hmm. I wonder, should I switch over to using Sharpie? Could it be that it's just not, um, the pencil's not sharp, sharp of a line enough? It is going a little bit blurry and not blurry, um, which is an old problem. Um, but yeah, the Sharpie would help if you're, and I, I know you're confident enough in using Sharpie. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm confident enough, but I'm okay if I make a mistake. <laughs> I'll be okay with it. It's a happy accident. It's a happy accident. That's right. We learn from our mistakes. And Bob Ross. And what? Sorry, Mally? And Bob Ross. <laughs> and Bob Ross. That's right. Oh, that's right. He's the, the king of happy accidents. Sometimes I quote Bob Ross so much I forget that it is Bob Ross. <laughs> okay. Oh, it does seem to keep going blurry. I wonder maybe if there's more light. There we go. Now I am going to um, put my ruler straight up and down or my straight edge straight up and down. I do see it's going kind of wonky today. I don't know why. And I'm going to on this side, draw a line that goes straight up and down. Not all the way across, just on this bottom part here. Then I'm going to take my ruler going um, across the page horizontally, and I'm going to line up this point and this point here, or straight across, line like that. You can see it's like I've got a brick kind of floating in space there. Now, if I was just using the um, pencil, I could erase these lines that were over here if I wanted to. But sometimes I think it's kind of cool to see the lines as they go. We're just going to see how this drawing looks in the end. Uh, so I've got one here. I'm going to do another one another rectangle um, on the other side, because I've got some empty space here. And maybe I'll make this rectangle uh, the one that goes more up and down, more of a vertical one. So I'm going to make the short edge there. Make a long edge. Another short edge. It's a little wonky of a shape, but that's okay. I'm going to line up this one here. Oh, sorry, I can't. Um, for some reason, it's not showing that I miss people's chat. It's just showing one question at a time for me today. For oh, there we go. Now I can see everyone. Uh, every, what people are writing. See when they're drawing. I know what it's going to turn out like. Oh. Oh, that's a great question. No, I'm not quite sure at this point what it's going to turn out like. This one's going to be a little more abstract of a of a drawing. Um, it's going to be different shapes, kind of floating in space, and I'm going to show you um how the ones below the horizon line look a diff little different than the ones above above the horizon line. And it's gonna be pretty cool in the end. Yes, I can definitely go slower, Gabriella. Thank you for, for telling me. Please don't hesitate to tell me if I'm going too fast. Mally, I cut you off. I think you were gonna say something. No, I was just gonna say that we're what, that uh, Gabriella asked if we could go just a little slower. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so I've got this um, rectangle here. I give it just another minute. Maybe let me know when you think it's a good, oh, Gabriella, you're good? Okay, thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, now I am gonna start with this bottom corner and it's the bottom corner that's on the inside closest to this vanishing point that I'm starting with. I'm gonna do a little dot there because I find that helps. And then I'm gonna line up the ruler with the point to the, Sorry, the ruler with the both points. I'm lining them both up so I can draw a line between this one and that one. And then that's what I'm going to do. Draw a line. Now I'm going to make a point in this corner of the rectangle. And I'm going to draw a line from this point to the vanishing point in the middle. Pause for a minute. I'm getting kind of excited about how this is looking. Okay. So now, although this line, it's going to be a very skinny line, I can tell already. But I'm still going to create that line. So we're just seeing a bit of the top of the, what this box will be. It's kind of a box or a cube. So I'm going to put a dot on this side. And then I'm going to line up my ruler. And because my marker is kind of a thicker marker, I'm not going to be able to really see it. But it's still worth it to draw the line for me. Let's see how it turned out. Oh yeah, just a thin little top. It looks like a walkway. It does, Elena. It does, doesn't it? Um, sometimes when I do this lesson with students, um, I create it so there's like a street down the middle and actually we may have enough time today that we can do a second drawing. We'll see. Or if we run out of time, you could challenge yourself to do that at home after where this is like a street and there's buildings on either side. Can you see how this could easily be made into a building if there are some windows? Um, some windows put on it and a door. Yeah. And if we put another line here, we could make it look like there are sidewalks or a long train. That's right. We could be, oh, it does look like it could be a train for sure. Yeah. Another drawing I do sometimes is a train track. It's like we're standing looking down a train track. You can see already how this is. It looks like we're high up. It does. It does, AJ. And actually, I was just going to mention that too. So it looks like because we can see the tops of these blocks that we've made, it does create that illusion that we are high up looking down. Now, I wonder how that's going to change when we make something up top here. But I think before I do that, I'm going to put my line parallel. That means in line with this line. And then I'm going to move it over to create a straight up and down line. And it could be wherever you want it to be within the space. And I'm going to make a line. Actually, I'll make it a little close. Mm, no, I'll make it here. I'm 
gonna put this up and down line again. There. And if there's enough space that you can have a line, I don't really have enough space to make this line that goes across. No, because my, um, maybe I'll try. My marker was so thick. But you could, if you have enough space, you can make this top line that goes straight the other way on this block. And again, if I had, if I was working in pencil, then I could erase some of these lines after if I wanted to. Okay, I'm just gonna pause for a minute. You have a tiny bit of space too, AJ? Yours looks like mine? Yeah. So if you, have a, if you have enough space that you can fit in a little line, maybe with a pencil, it'd be easier to get a little line in. But if you don't have enough space, then you don't need to put it in. Okay, now we're gonna create something up high in this page, and we're gonna see how that looks different than the ones that are below. Doesn't it look like it's jumping out at you? Do, you, do your drawings look like that as well? Like it's really three-dimensional? Yeah, that's pretty cool, hey? Okay, so I'm going to make, I think I'm gonna make a long skinny rectangle up here. So I'm gonna use my ruler. Long line. And another one. And I'm going to turn my ruler up and down. Create these lines. All right, then I'm just going to pause for a minute. Oh, Cheryl says, kind of. And Elena, no, yours doesn't look like it's jumping out at you yet. N oh, no. And Deanna says, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, maybe as we keep working on it, it will. Oh, my, my camera got blurry again. Hmm. Don't know why it got blurry all of a sudden. There we go. Well. I'm glad to hear that some people's does look like it's jumping out. Um, for the ones that aren't, I'm, I hope that as we keep working on it, it'll look like it is. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna connect. We're gonna connect this line that's far away. I'm gonna put a dot on the corner. We're gonna create connect, sorry, this point, I should say, this point here with our important vanishing point. And we're going to draw a line. Oh, Elise and Alec want to make a triangle. Well, let's make a triangle next would be great. And actually, as I'm looking at um, these pieces, there are some triangles that are here, but it would be cool to make a three dimensional triangle. These are just triangles that happen to be made by the lines that we're creating here. We can intentionally make a three dimensional triangle. We'll do that next. All right, then we're going to put a uh, dot on this corner and we're going to connect this dot to this point. Ooh, there we go. Um, just because of how I put this, I didn't realize when I made this rectangle, I made it kind of in line with the middle here. So it's kind of a straight up and down one. So now what do we notice now about this piece? Does this piece look like we're up over top looking at it? Oh, Charlotte, you wrote, when you look down, it feels like I'm falling. Whoa. 
or does this piece look like maybe we're looking at the bottom of it like this piece is higher up skyscrapers would be cool to make yeah so this we're looking at kind of the bottom of this piece because this is our horizon line here and this is up above our horizon line so any of the blocks that we make that are below the horizon line look like we're looking down on them but any of the ones we make that are above the horizon line look like we're looking up at them. We can do a 3D circle. Let's make a triangle first. Oh, and actually before that, I'm going to make this line that goes horizontally across here. So that when we color it, maybe we'll shade this a different color. Um, or if you're using an eraser, you could erase these lines that are here. And then we could see how that looks like a block floating in space. Okay, let's do a triangle and I'm going to do a triangle. I don't know if I've done a triangle floating in space before. So this will be a challenge for me. I'm going to do it over here. Triangle has three sides. I love triangle shapes. Colleen, maybe you can um, ex like talk about what kind of art that would be. Like the ones that we saw from uh, Nunavut were more realistic, but what kind of style would that be? If oh, you're using shapes and things. So, so this is more of an abstract um, piece of art that we're doing. Um, so abstract is that it's not necessarily representational of something. Um, we could imagine how this could be, somebody had said a train or a building, but we don't have the details um, drawn into it. Um, so our mind kind of associates the shapes with different things. Um, so yes, just how some people said, oh, it looks like a train or it looks like a walkway. Um, I can imagine how it would be a building, but um, yeah, it's just just simple shapes right now. So that's a style of abstract abstract drawing that we're doing. Uh, okay. Oh no, oh, thanks. That's a great question. Well, I like I like to learn about um, different styles of art, as you know. <laughs> you know so much about different styles of art, Mally. Hey. No, I, I just like to look at art. <laughs> so I'm going to draw a line from the point of this triangle to our vanishing point here. And then I'm going to draw a line from the point of this corner to our vanishing line as well. This. Oh, and then I'm going to draw from the top. It's going to be a skinny little line, but I think we can fit it in to the vanishing point. And again, if you're using pencil, it'll probably be. There we go. Actually, that looks kind of. Um, the of triangle shape. Charlotte, I'm glad you're, glad you're having fun with this. Um, so perspective was something that Um, actually, now that I think, um, some buffering happening. 
Mally, from your end, does it look like it's blur? Yeah, it's getting on the internet now. It's that special time of day. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so once I found that I really enjoyed perspective drawing, it was something that I started practicing. So I'd encourage you guys, if you're having fun and enjoying this, start practicing making different shapes in different boxes um, to see how you could make your own perspective drawings of different things. Um, staircases are an interesting thing to try and do. Uh, like I mentioned before, a walkway or a building is great to do. So I am going to, um, I think I'm going to quickly add some color to this and then I thought we could try and fit in another drawing if that sounds okay. Oh, Raelle, you've made a staircase before. Um, so another trick with perspective drawing is to make the pieces that are closer to you a little brighter and then make them a little bit uh, fainter as they move away. And we'll see if I can show you an example of that. And I'm just gonna, because I didn't use an eraser, I'm just gonna color the blocks in the front part. So I'm Liam, making- Can you just wiggle, go up and down towards your camera? Ah, there we go. Oh, is it back? Okay. It went blurry, so now we're good. Usually it shows when it's blurry for you, it shows on my screen that it's blurry as well, but it wasn't showing that for me. Sorry about that. It's it's actually just gone blurry again. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Is it back? I think it might just be a bandwidth issue. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make um, it a little brighter here and then I'm going to make it fade off a little bit. We'll stop. So I think what's happening, boys and girls, is when Colleen is coloring, her hand moves quite a bit, and then it's the camera trying to keep up with her hand. That's it. So it'll come oh, right just like this as soon as she's done the cover. Yeah. Oh, so no worries, Colleen. Um, because my my uh, hand moves slower with just the drawing instead of the coloring. So maybe I should maybe we should move on and do another perspective drawing. That'll give you a sense of how you can start coloring your shapes in. Okay, I'm going to move on and get another piece of paper. I'll put this one up here for inspiration. There we go. And I'm going to create our horizon line again. And that's our line that goes across the page. There we go. And I'm going to create our, um, you could definitely add, Elena, I see your question about adding um, animals. You can definitely add animals to your drawing um, a little later. Um, animals, um, because they're organic shapes, um, they're a little trickier to do using one point perspective. Um, if I were to do an animal using perspective drawing, I would create the lines to that connect with the vanishing point. Um, and then I would make an animal, let's say I wanna make a series of sheep. I could make a sheep here that I, I know is gonna fit within those lines. And then if I were to make another sheep here, I would make it a little bit smaller and fit in these lines. And that would create the illusion of perspective. You could also layer them as well, um, would al which would also create that illusion of depth. Colleen, I think the kids are having trouble seeing because of the icons in WebEx. 
If you could uh, put the perspective picture that's at the top to the right hand side and then move your page up, that would be really helpful. Okay. Um, Left or right, whatever. You're right, I guess, or I'm not sure which right. way. Well, it's, I think it's mirrored on my screen. So, so you were left then? My, like to this side or to the other side? That, and just if you move that one down to the down a bit and then pull your page that you're drawing on up, then the kids, yeah, the kids are having trouble seeing. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Okay. Or I could just move this out of the way completely. How about I move sure. that out of the way? All right. Thank you. Okay. So I, so I made my vanishing point line. Now I'm going to make a, a line. I'm going to make an imaginary line. Well, not an imaginary line because I'm drawing it. I'm making a real line that goes across the page like a V. And then I'm going to do another one on this side. It goes off the page like a V. Go. This is going to be my street. I'm going to do another line just over top like that. That's going to be my sidewalk. Oh, I'm sorry, AJ, you mentioned circle and I forgot to do the circle on the last one. Um, I will try and fit a circle in on this one. Okay, AJ, thank you for reminding me. Sorry about that. I'm going to do a sidewalk on this side as well. I'm going to give you guys a minute to catch up. Hey, Cheryl, you're ready. Gabriella. Is this the second one? Yes, Cheryl, this is the second one. Sorry. Yes. Thank you for understanding, AJ. Yeah, we've had a bumpy day today. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. It's it's the in terms of the connection. Yeah. Jamie had a session this morning with a group of different students from all across the country. And um, yeah, I think he had a tough time connecting as well. There were some bumps in the road. Oh, Gabby, you're not ready yet. Thank you for telling me. AJ, you're good? Good. I'll give it just another, a few more seconds here. All right. Gabby, you're ready. Awesome. Thank you. Now, how, I'm, how am I going to go about this one? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a line up and down. Right about here. So I'm kind of in the middle of this line and this line. Got my ruler here and I'm going to create a line that's going to go up through the horizon line. I'm going to do this line here. I'll give you guys a minute. Elena, you could maybe try and do a campfire. That's a, that would be a really cool one. Beach or by this by the lake. I love all these great suggestions. Okay, so we got a line that goes up and down. Now I'm gonna connect this top point, I'm making a, a dot at the top of this line, and I'm gonna connect this this. I'm doing this one a little bit backwards than the last one. I'm almost doing the steps backwards than the last. A house. Let's 
We can make this one into a house. Well, actually, I was thinking this would be a, a building. This is a building like it's on a street. Um, but I like the house suggestion. All right. Now I'm going to make a line here. It's going to go across this way. It's almost like an L I've made here. Ooh, an ocean. I love all these great scenes. A road going in the mountains in the distance. Very cool too. I love these suggestions. Okay, now I'm going to make the line that goes at the top here goes across. So this is our rectangle that we're making now. And the line that goes down. So we've got the rectangle here. Give me a minute. if I should connect. Yes, I think I should make another line. I'm going to make another line that goes from this point to this point. It runs across, but I'm actually going to make it go off the page too. It is see-through, Charlotte. You're right. It is. I was just thinking the same thing. It is. It's see-through. And if we made a line that went from this point up here to the vanishing point, that would make it even more see-through. Should we do that? What do you think? Should we make it an invisible building? Okay, let's do that. Oh, some people say no. Some people say yes. So it's up to you if you want to do it or not. I'm gonna make it the line that goes from here to here. See, sometimes we get these happy accidents that happen and it's okay. Look at that. That makes me think of Wonder Woman and her invisible flying machine for some reason. Now, if this was a building that you wanted to add a door to, you could, so maybe the buildings uh, well, maybe the door could be, there could be a doorway here that you could add. There could be windows, so you could maybe get a breeze through your invisible building. You could make the line that goes up and down here. Bye, Owen. We'll see you next week. Bye. There we go. Now I wanted to get that circle in. Ooh, glass elevator like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I didn't think of that, Charlotte. That's a great idea. I love that idea. You and you could you could make windows going all the way up if you wanted to. Okay, so let's get a circle in and I am going to use this um, glue stick and trace it using the bottom. Oh, the bottom's a little bumpy. There we go. Okay, to do is. Oh, yes, yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Mally. Sorry. Gabby would like a second to get caught up. Absolutely, catch up. Yeah, because we and we only have just a couple minutes left. Yes, I think that's why I started rushing a bit. Sorry about that, Gabby. Okay. All right. So to make a circle, so and don't don't feel rushed, Gabby. If you want to add more windows later, you definitely can. Um, if you want to add more buildings, you could make another building that's behind here, like this. 
can do that. You can add more things later on if you'd like, or add another building on this side. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> Charlie, I like that you, you said yours is a chocolate factory because your name's Charlie. That's very cool. All right, so to, now to make a circle, it's a little trickier like you may have been thinking because there's not the corners to make the points go to. So what you have to do is line up the edge of the circle with where the vanishing point is. So I, I imagine that on this edge here, that's um, where the point would be that would line up with my vanishing point. So that's a little tricky. But once I get the spot and line it up, then I make the line. Like that. And then I do the same thing on the other side at the top. I figure out where, um, where the edge of the circle would be. And then I line it up with the vanishing point and I make the line. To me, this kind of looks like a spotlight would look. If there was a light here and shining a spotlight out into the sky, that's how it looks. You agree, AJ? Like a Batman. I was thinking Batman too, Lily. <laughs> Charlotte, yeah, just like the bat signal. Or a cannonball. Oh, I like the idea of a cannonball. Yeah, I really like Batman. So I thought of that Batman too, as well. Now, if you wanted to make it look like it's kind of, um, uh, I'm not sure what you would call that shape, like uh, some, something that's like a tube, I guess. I would um, see the curve in this bottom part of the circle, and then I would make, copy the same curve and make it there. So it kind of looks like it's a tube. A cylinder. Thank you, Charlotte. Cylinder. That is the word I was trying to think of. That was a good. Lena, it could be like a shooting star. Wow. And a shooting star would be a cool thing to make. That'd be kind of tricky, but you could make a star and then you need to make all of the points line up to the line. And I'll just kind of quickly do one because I see we're kind of out of time, but all of the points there, you could line up to the line. That one would be like an invisible one, I think. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Water slide park. Ooh, so I really hope you guys have fun continuing to work on the drawings, maybe adding some color, adding some of those interesting things you wanted to add, like animals and um, campfires and different things that that are just from your imagination. Bye, Cheryl. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, some trees you could add and filling up your drawing. Um, and continue to practice. Thank you, AJ. Bye. Yeah, so thanks. That, is, that was so that was so great to see how you did an abstract and also like a a little bit of a landscape and use that one perspective with the vanishing point. That was fabulous, Colleen. Thanks. And I think someone mentioned in the chat that they were going to practice, which Great. What we hear from all of our artists that they just practice, practice, practice and find a technique that they really love. 